Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching. I am so excited to film today's video. It is my get to know me. So this is the first type of video I have done like this. I, in a couple previous videos, asked for you guys to leave me any questions about me that you were curious about, and I actually got a ton of comments from you guys with questions, things you were curious about. I wrote them all out, so I am gonna go through those today, and I just couldn't be more excited. So thank you so much to everybody who took the time to leave me a question. I always appreciate any time you guys leave a comment. I know that takes, it takes time and you know, just watching my videos takes time. So doing that extra step of leaving me a comment, just know I really appreciate that. And I, that's just one of my favorite parts about this whole YouTube thing is the comments. I love talking to you guys in the comments. And I, I just want you to know that I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. And especially when you leave a comment, because I know that takes time. So let's get into the things you guys were curious about. So I'm gonna try to run through these kind of quick because because there are a whole bunch of them here. So I was asked what my favorite color was. It's green. It's been green since I was very young. My favorite food also may come as a surprise. It is McDonald's. <laughs> I love McDonald's. And I think my love of McDonald's really, it's just from my childhood. I had one of my sets of grandparents for a special treat would always take me to McDonald's and I would always get a Happy Meal. And I have very strong, very early memories memories of that experience and so it's just it's ingrained in that and I just I love McDonald's I never eat McDonald's I only get McDonald's once a year on my birthday so if you don't know I do try to follow a ketogenic diet and so McDonald's doesn't fit into that Thank goodness, otherwise I would probably eat McDonald's every day. I just, yeah, so I get McDonald's on my birthday. That's my birthday meal. It has been for quite a few years now, and I, I love it. Once a year I have McDonald's, but it's my favorite food. My favorite dessert is anything super decadent and chocolatey is my go-to. I, again, rarely have desserts because desserts don't fit into the diet that I follow, but I love desserts. I love any sort of baked good, anything, you know, high in sugar, high high chocolate, high carb. I love that. And so anything super decadent and chocolatey. I love a chocolate cake with a buttercream or cream cheese cream cheese frosting. I love that. And again, I just rarely eat those things, but I do love them. I come from my my grandma is Italian, and so and she, um, for, you know, part of my childhood she owned a bakery. And so yeah, I have lots of again very early on fond memories of desserts love dessert. My favorite alcohol is port. I love port. I am not much of a drinker. In fact, I, I pre-COVID almost never drank. Uh, a little bit more now, <laughs> but but I tend to drink things that are uh, low carb right now, so I'll mostly drink a neutral. But if I was to pick an alcoholic beverage that I like, it's port. I really enjoy port. Okay, what else should we get through here? My favorite state to visit, somebody asked me that, and it's California. California because I love Disneyland. I've been to Disney World and I prefer Disneyland. It's just more of a manageable size for me. And I just love California. I know lots of people love California. Probably my second favorite state would be Hawaii. I've only been one time to Maui, but we absolutely loved it and I have very fond memories. I love going down to the States. So if you don't know, I'm Canadian. I live in Canada and I live in one of the Western provinces. And so very, we're very close to the US. For me, the drive is about two, two and a half hours, something like that. And I absolutely love going down to the US because there's lots of products in the US that we can't get here in Canada. Surprising, I know. But uh, even shipped in, some things just won't ship in. So I love going shopping in the US. I haven't been down to the US in a few years at this point. We didn't travel at all in 2020 and uh, I, I'm not sure we'll be able to travel even uh, 2022. So it's gonna be a few years before I get back down there. There's lots of regulations right now. For a long time that border was closed between Canada and the U.S. to all non-essential travel. It is opened up now but there's lots of regulations and quarantining things and all of that. So I haven't been to the U.S. in a long time. I love going to the U.S. It's something we used to do all the time, multiple times a year. We would go to Vegas all the time. San Diego I, this is another place we love to visit but California is my favorite state and the reason 
for that is because I love to go to Disneyland, which of course is in California. Uh, somebody asked my tattoos. I have four tattoos. I have my husband's initial there. His name is Barry. And then my sons are Tyler and Jacob. So I have a T and a J there. I have another tattoo that runs down my breastbone, which I'm not gonna show it on the internet. And then I have another one behind my ear. I have a feather behind that ear. And so uh, the one between um, that runs down my chest, I got when I was very young, actually underage. <laughs> and so uh, again, uh, very young. And it's just some symbols, you know, the 90s, everyone was doing symbols. These are Japanese symbols down my chest. And then these ones are probably at least 10 years old, I would say. I love these. These are the fa my favorite tattoos. And then this one behind my ear, actually, I got when my son turned 18. I think when he turned 18, he wanted a tattoo and so we went together. He got a tattoo and I got that one. Yeah, I do. I like tattoos and so I have four. Somebody asked if I was an extrovert or an introvert. I am actually very much an introvert. I prefer to be home. I like uh, my alone time. I do like to be around people, but as all introverts, I find socializing exhausting. You know, I love to be around my girlfriends. I, I love that, but it's a struggle for me to get there. If I'm honest, I will make plans because I'm excited. I'm excited to see people. I'm excited to do things. But then as that event gets closer, I think like a lot of introverts, I, my, you know, I want to cancel. I, I just prefer to be home. Yeah. So I, it's, it's funny. I, I'm not sure people would know that I'm as introverted as I am if you were to meet me. I'm an, maybe an outgoing introvert. I don't know, is that a thing? But I am I'm absolutely an introvert. I prefer to be home and I'm most comfortable spending time on my own. <laughs> not that I don't like to see people and not that I don't like, I love my girlfriends. I love to get together. I love to go for dinner, but I do find those outings a little bit tiring. So I, I'm an introvert. I prefer to spend time on my own. I have the house to myself today, which is just one of my favorite favorite things. And again, not that I don't love my family. I love I love for them to be around, but I also really enjoy my alone time. Uh, somebody asked if I'd had any cosmetic procedures. I have not. I have done Botox and I have done lip filler. I've done lasering. I've done chemical peels, but I've never done like an actual cosmetic procedure uh, where you know, a plastic surgeon's gone in and, and altered anything. And it's not that I'm opposed to those things, I just am fearful. And so that's why I have never done them. I have wanted to have a breast augmentation done forever, you know, 20 years, probably at least. But again, I'm fearful of that procedure, so I'll never have it done. You know, liposuction, again, sure. Yeah, I've had, I've had a couple of kids. There's some spots that could use a little <laughs> but I'm never gonna do it. I just, I, for fear. I'm just, I'm too fearful. I don't want something to happen. Never had any cosmetic procedures done. Somebody asked about, I had quite a few questions about my uh, work experience, my first job. My parents owned a hair salon and so I would work there, you know, sweeping up hair, washing people's hair. <laughs> so gross so gross yeah not for me but i i did my first job was in a hair salon my career has been in dental so i am a registered dental assistant and my i did that late i stayed home with my kids for quite a few years and when they hit sort of their early teens i went back to school i got my licensing for dental assisting i worked chair side with a dentist for i think about five years i think dental dental assisting is a lot of energy out and so as I've gotten older, I've struggled with that. It's a busy profession. You are running, at least where I am. I, I don't know about everywhere else, but I really enjoyed the ladies that I worked with at that office. And I really, I really liked the dentist. Not at first, <laughs> but later on. Um, yeah, that was a, that's a steep learning curve to go from, you know, taking something in the classroom setting and then applying that in a practical application as, you know, somebody who was a little bit older, not in my 20s for sure. I was in my 30s. It was tricky that was tricky and then so I stopped doing that after about five years the dentist that I worked for moved away and I stayed home with my kids for a couple years and then an orthodontist that I knew because he had uh, done my treatment as well as my children's braces he asked if I would come work for him and that's what I do currently I work for an orthodontist and I do their treatment coordinating so what I do is I don't work chair side anymore I work in an office and when people come in and the doctors recommend orthodontic treatment I explain that procedure 
to people. So I go over the appliances that are needed. I go over insurance, cost of that treatment, payment plans. I set up appointments, all of those things. So I coordinate that treatment for that office. And I have been there about seven and a half years at this point. Somebody asked about my animals and the adoption story behind them. So I have two dogs. I have Albie who's 13 and we adopt, we, we sort of adopted her. She was, my son just brought her home one day. She was somebody else's little tiny dog and they just thought that it wasn't safe for them to own her because she was so little and they lived out in more of a rural setting. And so they just asked my son if he wanted her and we brought her home and she was a pound. She was one pound when we got her. If I can find a little photo of her when we first got her, I'll put it up. And now she's 13. We've had her for 13 years and we had her, she was our second dog. So we had a dog, a miniature pincher. Again, if I can find a picture of Peanut, I will put her up that we adopted from the pound. And we had her for, she was 20 years old when she passed. And so for 10 years, when we had Albie, we had always had Peanut. And so when Peanut passed, again, at 20 years old, we we gave, we had a little bit of a mourning period, but then we knew we would want another dog. More for Albie. I mean, not that we don't, we don't love our little adopted Luca, we do, but we wanted Albie to have a companion companion because we work outside the home and because she'd always had a dog. We, we mourned the loss of Peanut for a little bit and then we started looking for a companion for Albie. It was tricky because we knew we wanted something very small because Albie's very small and she's actually been attacked a few times. So she, she'd she been bit twice by a bigger dog and so we didn't want anything large. We wanted something super small but she's only four or five pounds so that is a very, a very little window for us. So we looked here where we are. We looked locally for a few months and then we broadened that out to Canada for a few months and those little little tiny dogs they go quick from uh, rescue organizations and we, we knew we wanted to rescue we didn't want to buy we didn't want to purchase from a breeder that's just a personal choice for us so we my husband was looking one one late evening and we came across a little picture of Luca I'll put a picture that we found online of her because I was immediately in love but it was out of Texas so she, we got her from the Chihuahua Texas, Texas Chihuahua. I can't remember the name of the organization, but some of that. It's the Texas Chihuahua Rescue, I think is what it's called. And so we messaged them and they're like, yeah, just, you know, come get her. And so my husband flew down to San Antonio and they, they met him. He stayed at a hotel at the airport and they brought Luca to him and he spent the night with her. And then when he went to the airport to fly home with him, the airline wouldn't let her on the plane because her rabies shot hadn't been in her system long enough. And so he had to take her back to the rescue organization. I cried. I imagine he cried. I don't know, but he flew home without her. That organization was so kind to us. They drove her up to the border and my husband, you know, this was like a month later though. So that was very hard. And so my husband just drove across the border, picked her up and brought her home. But that whole process was months for us. Well worth it. And we're so happy to have our little Lou. She's, she's so cute. Interesting though, we had her for a few months and then she started limping and we took her to the vet and the vet said oh her her whole leg needs to be rebuilt like this leg is shot it's no good and so uh yeah we, we actually took her for multiple opinions we were very, we didn't want to operate on her because she was so little i would say she's probably six or seven pounds now but when we brought her home she was maybe two or three pounds so you're talking a very tiny little chihuahua we didn't want to put her through that so we went for multiple opinions from people different vets and all the vets said yeah you know what it just you just need to do it she was at this point not even using the leg anymore so she had quite an extensive surgery very early on I took a couple weeks off work my husband took a week off work and then actually that that was early in 2020 yeah so then we were I was shut down from my my work was shut down for a couple months so then I was able to stay home with her for a couple months after that but yeah quite an extensive and expensive <laughs> surgery that surgery here in Canada was about four thousand dollars so we're we were happy to do it we love that little that little dog so much and it's been great it's just enhanced her quality of life so much the other option was just to either remove the leg which I know is gross or just have her not use it and she just would hold it up and walk on three legs so it really it did 
did have to be done and you know thankfully we were in a position to do that for her so yeah we love her that's my dog's adoption story so we just love both those little dogs and so happy to have them who my favorite youtuber is I have a lot I wrote some of them down I'll list all of these down below so you can check out their channels if you're not familiar with these I love glitter fallout Linda on glitter fallout I love her she's just very down-to-earth and real and I think for all of these that's what I love about these women so glitter fallout Lauren May Beauty another one of my absolute favorites Jessica Braun I love her she's so sweet Raw Beauty Christy love her I love Tati it's funny I know people have real mixed feelings about Tati but I loved her before and I love her even more now. I feel like all the things she's been through have just really brought out more of her own genuine self and I love her for that. Uh, I love Robert Welsh, I love Wayne Goss. Uh, there's lots there's tons if you want to see all of the thing all of the youtubers i'm subscribed to you can see that actually if you click over onto i think it's under the community tab i don't have those privatized i have those so people can see them and that's on purpose because i feel like i like to look through who people i like to watch i like to look through who they like to watch and and see that and then quite often i'll find other people to follow on there so somebody asked why those are some of my favorites and it's because I just enjoy their content. I feel like they're genuine and I love that and I hope that on my channel I come across as genuine. I try to be as true to myself always in my videos as I can be and I hope that comes across. Who my favorite, who would I like to collab with on those videos? Again, as an introvert, a collab would be very tricky for me. I don't know that I could do that in a way that would not be awkward. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. That maybe is that maybe will come later on for me. And a um, makeup brand collab, really any of them. I I would love for any brand to send me anything, and I would review it, and that would be fantastic. The only collab I did was with Merit Beauty, and that was fantastic, and I enjoyed that whole process. And the reason I enjoyed it was because there was no expectation from Merit that I would review things in a positive light. They sent me their stuff. They said, here it is. Let us know what you think. Do a video. Be honest. And so I did that, and that was fantastic. And any makeup brand who wants to send me their stuff, knowing that I'm gonna try it and knowing that my opinions will be my own, I'm happy to do that. Really, no one in particular. I mean, there are some faves that I have that I, I mean, Charlotte Tilbury, yeah, I'd love to try more. Hourglass, I'd love to try more. LYS Beauty actually is a brand. I, I'm really curious about quite a few of their products, so that would be fantastic. You know, I can only purchase so much makeup, so any of those brands that wanted to send me stuff, that would be, that'd be great. <laughs> The guilty pleasure YouTube channels that I like to watch are ASMR. I love to watch SASS. SASS AMSR, is that what her channel's called? I think so. But yeah, I really love ASMR videos. I love true crime, Bailey Sarian. I love her. I love Brittany Vaughn. Again, I'll link these channels below, but yeah, I really like true crime. Yeah, those are probably my two guilty pleasures. The ASMR ones, the food ones. I, love, I like to watch the food ones and, and I like to watch true crime. Okay, well, how I got into makeup, I've always been into makeup. Somebody asked how I got into makeup. So I've always loved makeup. I've always worn makeup from a very early age. I've said this before in other videos, I had my children very young. And so for all of their years growing up, I wore makeup just to make myself feel oh no 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 so I've always worn makeup from a very early age but while I was raising my kids I wore pretty minimal makeup just the basics that I could wear to make myself feel pretty and for all those years I had a very tiny makeup collection again I had one foundation one concealer a mascara a blush and an eyebrow brush really that's what I wore maybe a lip gloss I'm not even sure I had a you know a ton of lipsticks nothing like that and it wasn't until my boys and, and the reason for that was just time I just didn't have the time I was busy I was running after children I was you know running to sports I was helping them through their school stuff <laughs> 
after every video. Just too busy to focus on my love of makeup. And then once my boys were older, that's when I had more time to really get into makeup. And that's when I really started also watching lots of YouTube videos on makeup. And that sparked that desire to then try this out for myself. So that's kind of how that all evolved. Now, I've always enjoyed the process of putting on makeup, but now I find that whole process just my, I you know, I sit down, I've got my cup of coffee, and I enjoy that process from start to finish. It is a little bit of therapy for me every single morning. Even if I'm home doing nothing, I almost always come in here and sit and put some makeup on. I just feel better. It just helps kind of soothe my soul. Do you know what I mean? Like I just love that whole process. It's very therapeutic for me. I love it. And so I then, you know, that love of makeup just sort of grew. Again, had always been there, but hadn't been a focus. And I started purchasing more makeup. I started wearing more makeup. I started experimenting with more makeup. And I started watching YouTube videos from ladies who were doing what, what I'm now doing. And watching those videos and just how much I loved and appreciated their content really got me thinking I should do this. And it was funny, I thought about doing it for a lot of years. And I would watch Hot and Flashy, Angie on Hot and Flashy, and she did lots of skincare, lots of beauty, lots of how to for more mature women and I just love that and I remember thinking to myself why why don't you if she can do it you can do it you know and that's sort of my thing if they can do it I can do it and why not do it you know just why not why not try it maybe it'll be fantastic and you know what kept me back was just my fear of again as an introvert putting myself out on the internet and that fear of what I would get in return. Would I get negative comments? Would I get creepy comments? Would I get, I don't know, just the fear of that is really what held me back. And I just decided last year enough. Try it. If you hate it, you can stop. Put out one video and see how that does, you know, and then it's just sort of grown from there. And I have to say, thankfully, I have all these amazing people who have subscribed, which is just so touching to me. And the comments I get are so incredibly kind across the board. I think I have had less than a handful of comments that I've had to delete out and not even because they were rude. I don't know, knock on wood. <laughs> I don't think I've had a rude comment. I've had some comments that were uh, like linking to other other things. I don't know what because I don't touch those links. I just immediately delete those comments. Mostly what I've had is just a lot of support and love on here. And it's been fantastic. This whole experience, I've been a little over a year now making videos on YouTube and the whole experience has been fantastic. And I'm so grateful for this outlet. I love this. I love making these videos. And again, I love hearing from you guys. And then I do I did get one comment here. I'm going to read off some of these questions because they are in regards to my YouTube channel. There was quest there was questions about what my family, friends and colleagues think about my YouTube channel. And again, across the board, I've had lots of support. My husband and my sons are so excited for me for this whole thing. I am so thankful for my husband and my kids. I can't even tell you. I at the end of this video, I'll get into a little bit more about my family, but I thought I would save that for the end because they'll probably cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, my, my husband and my sons think this is amazing. They think it's great. We celebrate every milestone. Earlier this year, I hit 100 subscribers. That was a big deal for me and it was a big deal for them. And so they're very, very supportive, more supportive than you can even imagine. Uh, my extended family, so my parents, my brother, I don't know that they necessarily understand the YouTube thing <laughs> but they're also supportive and all of my co-workers are incredibly sweet and kind and supportive as well and yeah I get I just across the board I get a lot of support for for this YouTube thing that I'm doing even from people who don't maybe understand it also my friends I have a girlfriend who watches all my videos you know who you are <laughs> and, and I have lots of girlfriends who are subscribed and yeah just tons of support. 
So anyways, lots of support from my girlfriends as well on this. Somebody asked how long a video takes to make. I would say on average, my videos take about six hours, which maybe everyone's not aware of that, but the filming process probably takes me about an hour. There's some setup. There's of course some takedown after, and then the editing process takes me three hours, four hours, something like that. And then of course I make a thumbnail and I link products down below. So yeah, I would say it's probably about a six hour process. Some of that process I love, some of it I don't. <laughs> and uh, I wish I was quicker at it. I'm not, it is it is a long process. And they asked if it was worth it and it is, it is. I love this, this is a hobby for me. I, you know, of course on YouTube you have to hit, I, I don't, again, I don't know if everyone knows this, but I think you have to have a thousand subscribers before you start generating revenue from the ads that are on your videos. So I don't make anything off of YouTube. It really is just a hobby, but a hobby that I, I really, really enjoy and am very grateful that I have, again, this outlet to do this. So yes, it is worth it, but yes, it is very time consuming. And some of that process I love and some of it not so much. The editing can be a bit tedious, but I try to take my time and just, you know, make sure that I've, I've just done the best job I can. There's always growth and learning. This was incredibly hard for me to learn how to do all of this. Again, as an older adult, you know, some of the computer stuff just really was a struggle and I had to watch lots of YouTube videos to figure out how to make a YouTube video. It's just not as easy as as I think people think it is maybe. I don't know if people think it's easy. I always knew this was going to be complicated. <laughs> Plus I have to edit out a lot of that. A lot of the dogs running around. Somebody asked if I have a subscriber goal in mind. Uh, like I mentioned, that thousand subscribers would be fantastic. <laughs> I think that's my my long-term goal. I imagine it will take me a while to get there. It took me a year almost to hit 100. Uh, right now I'm sitting as a filming, I'm sitting at just under 500. If I could hit 500 by the end of the year, that would be a big deal for me. If I could hit 1,000 at some point next year, that would be fantastic. I think those are some big goals for me long term. That would be great. But if that doesn't happen, also I'm I'm fine with that. I'm I'm fine with the slow and steady. I think if it was to balloon real quick, I would be a little bit um, a little bit overwhelmed by that too. So knowing my personality, slow and steady is fine. I'm I'm fine with slow and steady. They asked if there also another question I got was was there anything that would stop me from being from doing these YouTube videos and. Yeah, I mean, if I was to all of a sudden start getting a lot of hate or a lot of, you know, anything that was upsetting to me, you know, it would probably have to be in the comments or something like that. But I, I wouldn't do this if, if I was doing it and any process of this was at all upsetting to me because I love doing this, but I have lots of things also outside of this that I love. So yeah, I, I'd, I'll do this as long as I enjoy this and as long as it's a positive thing in my life. And if at any point that changes, then yeah. I would stop. Another question was what I like doing outside of YouTube and we used to travel. That was a big part of our life. We have been to many destinations, you know, in Canada, in North America and uh, worldwide. We had started going overseas uh, more recently. I've been to Paris. I've been to Ireland. Again, lots down in the US, lots of warm destinations, Mexico, uh, Vegas, again, San Diego, California, stuff like that. I've into Florida, lots of the US states that sort of border Canada, I've been to those as well. Yeah, travel. Travel was a big thing for us. We haven't traveled since 2019 and so that's been tough. That's been really tough. Also a big thing for us, we love to eat out. We love to, when I say we, I mean me and my husband. We love to go to new restaurants, try new things, go out with friends. We like to go to movies. Yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough the last couple of years because all the things that we really enjoy are things we can't do right now. I also love spending time just with my family. So we've sort of embraced that. We're you know, doing more family games game nights, uh, spending time with having my sons over to spend time with. We like things like that. So yeah, it's been tough. We haven't traveled since 2019. We went to Ireland in 2019 and that's fabulous. That, that trip was fantastic. If you have never been to Ireland, that whole country, we did the whole 
the whole island, the whole country. And it was so amazing. Such history, such amazing things to see. And the people in Ireland were so warm and inviting and kind. So uh, yeah, that whole trip we loved. So hopefully we were supposed to get to Italy February of 2022. It will be our 20 year wedding anniversary. And that was, oh, that's been the plan the last 10 years was to go to Italy. I have family from Italy and I wanted to go and visit the place where my family was from, which is Bovelina. We will not be there. <laughs> we are not doing that trip. We're going to wait for the world to kind of get back. I don't know if the world will ever get normal again, but more normal than it is now. I don't want to plan a trip and, you know, it not be as good as it could be because of the current things that are going on. But Italy is definitely high on my list and I will get there one day, just not next year like, like I was supposed to. Okay, and then I had questions about my sons and my husband. So uh, I'm married and have two sons. Barry and I have been together for about 22 years and married for, like I said, 20 in February. So when I met Barry, my kids were two and four. We have two sons, Tyler and Jacob. Tyler will be 26 here right away and Jacob will be 24 in the new year. I met Barry through my dad, <laughs> through my stepdad. My stepdad owned a company that Barry was a, he was a supplier for that company. But I met him at a time when I wasn't at all interested in meeting somebody, but was drawn to him in a way that uh, I can't explain either. And just the first time I saw him, I don't think, I think we just said hi to each other in passing. He was dropping something off at my parents' house and I was going there uh, for a visit. And again, my dad owned a welding company and he worked for a gas manufacturing company. And so he supplied gas to the company that my dad owned and he was dropping something off at my parents house and I walked by him and like I just it's it's this moment that I will never forget and I felt like my whole world slowed it was such a such a powerful moment for me that I will never forget it. I'm going to try not to cry talking about it, but so thankful for him and love him so much and had to really push to get that first date because I don't think he was that interested. He worked for a company that was supplying product for my dad and one of my uncles worked for this same company that Barry worked for. So he was not at all interested in pursuing that. And yeah, it took me probably six months to get that first date. I just, I knew right away. I just instantly knew and I never I knew without even talking to him I knew without even spending five minutes with him I just knew I knew right away um, yeah so <laughs> it's quite it's quite a long story but I saw him then and I saw him a couple times after that and I asked my uncle to give him my number and finally my dad said to him one day he was in there you know just doing a check on my dad's company and it, it's my stepdad I don't want to have any confusion because I have a stepdad and a dad it was actually my stepdad and he said to Barry I hear you dating my daughter and Barry said uh no 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 I'm not I'm absolutely not because he didn't want to offend him <laughs> and my dad said well you should be Here's her number. And Barry took a couple days to think about whether he wanted to take all that on because I was a single mom with two little two little boys. And he called me and eventually after a couple days, I wasn't sure he was gonna call actually. And he did call and uh, I think I think we talked that first night for three or four hours. Just the easiest conversation I've ever had with anybody. I think we talked twice on the phone and then we went on a date and we dated for probably six months before he met my boys. And yeah, I mean, just just such an incredible person. <laughs> I knew I was going to cry. So there you go, you guys. That's how I met my husband. And I just am, again, just so I can't even express how thankful I am for him every day. He has made me a better person and he is very much responsible for, in large part, to, to the wonderful men that my boys have become. And I know I am very thankful for him and I know my boys are very thankful for him as well. So it takes a real special person to raise children that are not their own. If you are a step parent out there, that is, I mean, you you just deserve all the thanks in the world because that is a tough job. That's a tough job. So yeah, I'm not gonna get into my boys and how proud I am of them because clearly 
that will just, I'll be an emotional mess for that whole thing. So there you go, you guys. There's a get to know me. I hope there were some things in there that were interesting that maybe you didn't know and hadn't thought about me. I that was that was really great. I appreciate each and every one of you that left me a question. I love making videos. I love doing YouTube. It's tough to put yourself out there. It really is. So we'll see. That was quite emotional talking about my husband. We'll see how much of that stays in this video. <laughs> but yeah, thanks guys. I really I loved this. I loved this get to know me video. I hope that you now know me a little bit better than you did and I hope there were some surprises in there that maybe you didn't know about me. So thank you each and every one of you who have subscribed, who watch my videos, who take the time to comment. Please know that I am just so grateful for that and, and I love doing this. So yeah. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would subscribe, if you're not already, that would be amazing. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone.